So let's talk about cards. Now cards can be really complex components. They can be really simple components. It really depends. I have the whole spectrum right here to show you. These are all the different types of cards I've designed in like this design system. I have something simple as just like an icon in a title card. I have something simple like just even text and icon imagery. I have something really complex like this. So many different elements, other components in there as well. You'll notice that I have like pills, which is over here. Uh, these are really simple components, kind of based off of our buttons. So let's go back to cards. I have icons. I have typography. I have imagery. So I have different things. Even in this one, I have all of that. Plus I have buttons. So, and these ones kind of have like an interaction built in. So these are the different types of base components I've built for cards. And I want to show you how I went ahead and built these. So you'll notice that I have a base card over here that has everything included. Like it has reviews, it has like a staff pick pill, it has a percentage pill of a sale, it has like strike throughs. I thought about all the different use cases that you can have in a card. And I'm not saying that every card is going to look like that. It may be rare that every card is going to have all this information. In fact, most cards will look like this. You see that I've turned them, I've turned that all off in this variation. I've created a new component called a large default product card. And all I have is I have my product name, price. I have a small description on these larger cards. I have the amount of reviews and the level of the review. This is like a five-star product and I have the category. Now I do have a variation where there is a sale and I have a strike through added and I have a sale. Now I have one with just a staff pick and I have both. So I've created all different components for those use cases. You know, I may not use these all the time. I may use them just to show variation within my designs, but I'm also using them to communicate with my developers that, you know, these are the different types of options that we need to think about and code. So if I were to take a variation of this, I can easily go ahead and I'll show you what the makeup of this card has. So if I wanted to say that this card is liked, let's go into my save button. So you see my, I have my product image section, which is like my top layer and I have my product info section, which is my bottom layer and everything else. And this is all set to an auto layout. And the reason why I'm using auto layout in this instance is, instance is because it isn't going to be responsive in my designs. I'm only using it like in one screen and I'm showing you how that looks. But what you could do is if you really wanted to, you can use auto layout to help space things out. And then once you're happy with that, you can just turn that off and it'll just automatically revert to another frame, a regular frame with the same spacing that you've applied. You just won't get the nice variation of like, if this copy went over the line height, the card would not grow. That's what I really love about auto layout. Anyways, let's get into uh, the different type of ways we can customize this card. So if I was thinking about this heart, I may want to fill it. So I have a heart, I want 24 pixel heart, and I'm just going to fill that with a red accent. First, I wanna think about what images I have. So I've set it up in a way where I have a lot of variation. I have electronics, I have music, I have books. So if I were to turn that off, like I have music, so there's different ways we can turn all these on and off. Boop, boop, boop. So I have like a record player. I have like uh, different types of uh, CDs or vinyls. If you wanted to show like fashion, I have, let's get into that. I have different variations. I have glasses, I have shoes. I have shirts. So what I've done is I've used that plugin called remove background to create easy ways for us to have like a nice, you know, pale background, this nice gray background and have just the image 
of like the product that we are trying to show. So let's see what, what we have here for electronics. So I have like an ultra wide screen monitor that's really ultra wide. I have like a VR kit, I have a MacBook, I have Bose headphones, I have an iPhone in here, I have an Xbox Elite controller, and I have AirPods. So say if I were to use the Xbox controller. Xbox Elite controller. And you know, we're in Canada over here, so this is gonna be really overpriced. Maybe, I think it's like a, maybe $100, I don't know. And we have a description. This controller is going to change your life. Mainly because it is awesome. So I can also change like the category. I can say something along the lines of, this is in gaming. Oh, maybe this can fit into two categories. Maybe if I uh, want to just kind of you know, add more if I wanted to. That's up to you, what you think is best for the product. It may just be best to kind of narrow it down to just the one. Totally up to you and totally what's best for the product. So I can also change the number here. There's four and there's maybe, it's a four star. And the reviews are like, there's like 2,034 reviews. So different ways that you can kind of customize that card. I've also created like smaller horizontal cards. You'll see that there is a sale. I don't have a sale pill here just because there's not enough screen real estate. I did give myself enough for like maybe like a staff pick. But on the smaller cards, these will be used like on category pages where we're just kind of stacking them in a grid. And these cards are much smaller just in nature. So that is what I've done for just like standard vertical cards. I've also created horizontal cards. So I've even broken these down. So these are more like standard. Let's remove this. These are like your vertical cards. They can be used for different instances. But when I mean vertical, I mean image on top and the descriptions on the bottom. Horizontal cards, I've used them in search results. So this is my default. This is my sale version and my staff pick version and my sale and staff pick version. So you'll see like this system is very much following like a set of rules, like these unwritten rules, like everything is placed like left aligned, similar over here. My staff picks always gonna be on my right side. Same with my sale. I'm keeping things incredibly consistent. While we're creating this design system, we're also creating a language. So I also have wish list cards. So if something's in my wish list, I have a default where it is saved. If I click that, that would remove it from the wish list. I have more of the important details here. I care less about if it's a staff pick at this point. You know, I've already added it to my wish list. I care more about its price. And you know, maybe it's reviews, it's category, that kind of information. And I've given it like a little CTA where it's an add to cart button. People can easily add that to cart. So if there is a price change, that is also reflected in this card. So like I'm saying, like there are cases where, I, okay, I have a wishlist card, but I don't have to create like unnecessary options that we'll never see. I don't need to create a staff pick option because we'll never have that option here. I've also gone ahead and taken this variant. So if you notice the search result cards and the wishlist cards are both the same variant of the horizontal product card here. Now what makes them work is auto layout. So if I were to go into my default component here, you'll see that I've actually hidden that primary button. If I were to show it, everything would just pop right back up and center itself. So like I said, create a one base version, allow that to be like your source of truth and you know iterate on that. I have a smaller horizontal card, which I'm using for order cards. So when you have an order that's maybe shipped, order in transit, I've created like a little link, a text link here with a little icon and delivered. I want people to know that they can click this and interact with it in some way or shape or form, maybe to see a receipt or maybe to see like all those order details. And for my horizontal product cards here, these are more simple where it's just a product name and a sale. We're not worried about anything else at that point. 
and I'll show you how that's used in a recipe. We have our car cards, which are pretty standard. We have our like our default and then our quantity version when we swipe left. We can edit the quantity and we have our color cards here. Very simple. These are our growing cards. So they will grow based off of the content. So if I select a new image, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this all the way up so we can see. We have our electronics. I'm going to hide that. And if I bring in a new image, it'll shrink. Same with fashion, same with anything really. So I've done the same exact thing for this. So if I wanted to create like a text button or maybe like this is a checkbox kind of thing, you know, like select all the different types of categories that you're interested in. And this one could be gaming. If I select it, then it turns with a yellow background with uh, the black text on top. So just to show it's selected, I have a text button, I have just a text card and you know, I've created these just because I don't know if I'll ever use them. I don't even think like if I, if I were to use something like this, and there is my variation. I don't think I would use orange. I would probably use something more subtle. Maybe I would use like nice light gray. So, I mean, you don't have to stick to the colors that you're creating these components in. They're meant to be used in any which way you like. And then I have a fixed button here. So nothing's gonna change as I add copy. And that's meant to be that way on purpose. So that way, if I know I'll have maybe two lines of text here or three lines at most, and these will all be able to say maybe like if I create like a grid. So I'll show you what that looks like. And there you go. Like I have a grid that is able to accompany things like just the rest of the page, but also it really complements if I want to uh, create like a section here that says like, you know, latest trends and so on and so forth and just to point people into other funnels. So that's how I've set up cards and cards. Like you can see they're incredibly complex. Like these ones are pretty complex, but you know, these are kind of like necessary, especially for our use case. We're using a lot of cards, especially with products. Uh, there's a lot of descriptions. There are a lot of different elements like prices, old prices, pills, reviews, categories, names, buttons, icons, imagery. So, this is an example of a really complex component and how we can use them. If we look into our assets, just very quickly, we can see we have our cards here and I can see all my different cards. So if I wanted my larger vertical cards, I'm going to go to my vertical. I'm going to see all the variation. I see large sale, large staff pick. I want a sale card and right there I can Go right in and you'll, you may be thinking, why is there so many different folders? I mean, if there weren't, it would be a mess. So I'll have 20% off sale and I can just easily add to that. If I wanted to, I can take this and be like, okay, I'm creating uh, some sort of recipe and we're going to do that soon. I'm creating a recipe and I want, oh, I don't want another sale card. I actually want a large default card. And this is where it's so powerful within Figma to create these variations and easily swap them. Oh, I don't want another default card. I want a sale and staff pick. I don't want a sale and staff pick. I want just a staff pick. So, you know, create those variations for those different use cases. And you'll see like, just like that, I've created four different variations and I can go in there and select all the different options and, you know, customize them the way I like. And I'm not going to create a component based off of that, but it just gives me all the options I need. And that is how I've built out cards for our design system.